we are going to talk about our cranial nerves in this section. Um, so I have made a table for you for cranial nerves, and so you will be responsible for the entire table on an exam. Um, so you will have to know the cranial nerves by their Roman numeral as well as by their name. If they have major branches, you need to know the major branches, and then you need to know um, their sort of basic function, okay? Um, I have down for you some mnemonics in the outline that will help be helpful. One mnemonic I have is OOO, to touch and feel very good velvet, ah, which is uh, the order of the cranial nerves as you learn them down. So the first three start with O, so olfactory, optic, ocular, motor, to touch, trochlear, trigeminal, etc., etc. Um, so what are cranial nerves? Cranial nerves are nerves, right? They, you have 12 pairs, so you have 24. They all attach to the brain, so they all originate within the brain, and they're going to exit the brain and serve mostly the head and neck. There is one cranial nerve that goes down into your thoracic and abdominal cavities. That's an exception to the rule, which is right here. Right, this serve in head and neck, except for the vagus nerve, which is cranial nerve 10, which runs to the should be thorax and abdomen. Okay, so uh, the number, so they're numbered one through 12 in a rostral to collar direction, so for anteriorly, inferiorly, uh, and then only the first two attach to the forebrain. All right, and the rest will come from the brain stem. Um, this is not that important for you guys to know, but what you do need to do is be able to label a diagram of your cranial nerves. You need to be able to name them by their number or by their name. Okay, you do not see the branches on the diagram. This is the diagram that is already numbered for you, so you can look at this. And uh, so room number one, we can see is the first one we see, two, Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Eleven is a very interesting one. Eleven is all the way, it actually arises from the spinal cord, and then here's twelve. All right, so let's get started with our first. So, this is um, actually a brain, human brain, obviously, with the cranial nerves still attached. So, it's fun to see what they look like in real life. These are fibers. And then, this is uh, a fun image. Just to think about, right, this thought experiment, is a brain transplant possible? If you were to take out someone's brain, then you would have to sever all 24 of our cranial nerves. You would have to sever the spinal cord. You have to sever very large blood vessels um, that come in to feed the brain. You'd sever the infundibulum that holds the pituitary gland in place. So you'd lose the pituitary gland. So you have to take all those structures out, and then how would you put that brain back into another skull? Because you'd have to reattach all these nerve fibers. Um, it would be, I don't know, I think it's impossible. Um, it's easier, I think some people have already done or tr attempted to or try or are thinking about doing head transplants. So it's easier to take off someone's head and put it back onto a neck than it is to take out a brain. Because you can see how insanely complicated and how much damage you'd be doing to take the brain out. What's also nice to see is this dura mater, right? So you see this connective tissue that you, underneath that's our dura. All right, so let's start with cranial nerve one. Cranial nerve one is the olfactory nerve. Now, the rounded end of the olfactory nerve is called the olfactory bulb. You do need to know this. The straightaway that goes back into the brain is then called the olfactory tract okay so the bulb is yellow here the bulb is what rests on top of your ethmoid bone remember that this is that cribriform plate of the ethmoid bone the holes in which the fibers drop through all the olfactory foramina and we can see our olfactory nerve fibers creating something called the olfactory epithelium so we're going to expand on this in the sensory chapter but you have a piece of tissue about the size of a postage stamp that contains all these fibers. It's not as exaggerated, obviously. It's going to be very, very tiny and microscopic, but you do have these fibers um, inside of your nasal cavity, all right? So the olfactory nerve is going to be for smell. So let me explain the sensory versus motor versus both. Um, 
some of these nerves are going to contain only sensory fibers. So they're the only kind of neurons that run through those nerves will be sensory. All right, for senses. And then there's some nerves that are strictly motor. So they're only going to control the movement of muscles, and that's it. Some of these, like the number five, the trigeminal, is both. They are going to carry, this trigeminal nerve has both sensory information and motor, um, motor neurons going to a certain area of the face. So they're going to carry both uh, sensory information back to the brain and also carry motor information out to the face. So there is a mnemonic on how to memorize whether a, a cranial nerve is sensory motor or both, which is the, um, some say merry money, but my brother says big brains matter most. So the S is for sensory, M for motor, and B for both. All right, so this is obviously just sensory, right? Your sense of smell, there's nothing moving. That's the olfactory nerve. The optic nerve, so number two. This is also strictly sensory, your sense of vision. So you're going to need to know that um, the initial nerve fibers that arise from the eye, that is called the optic nerve. When it crosses, like we looked at this, right? This is called the optic chiasm. You need to know that. Now, after the chiasm, the fibers continue back into the brain, and those are called olfactory, I'm sorry, optic tracts. So you do need to know this as well, optic tract. And then when they reach uh, the thalamus, as you can see here, right? Remember the thalamus is the relay station for all senses except for smell. Um, those will have radiating fibers that um, will synapse with the visual cortex. And those are called uh, projection fibers or radiation fibers. That is mentioned in the sensory unit, but I would just go ahead and introduce it here since you will need to know this eventually, okay? So we have the optic nerve, the optic chiasm, the optic tract, and then optic radiations. All right, that's, that's uh, number two. Number three, Roman numeral three, is our oculomotor. So oculomotor is a great name because it moves the eye. This is the eye mover nerve. So this is gonna control six, I'm sorry, four out of the six muscles that move our eye and I'll explain why it's easy to memorize this because the other two have nerves that basically describe what they do. So let's talk about those first. Okay, so trochlear, Roman numeral four, the trochlear nerve. So this goes back to remember in the muscles unit when we talked about the superior oblique muscle of the eye. So the superior oblique comes up, there's a tendon called the trochlea, and that tendon, so there's a sling called the trochlea. The tendon of this muscle goes through that trochlea and hits the eye at an oblique angle. So the one nerve, there's a whole cranial nerve just to control this one muscle. All right, so we have very fine movement with this muscle. That's our trochlear nerve. So that should make sense. You remember, oh, what muscle of the eye has a trochlea? The trochlear nerve controls superior oblique only. Now, the next one, the abducens, this is actually, you have to jump um, one down, this is number six. The abducens is going to abduct the eye, okay? So think about what's happening when you abduct the eye. You're taking your eye and you're rolling it away from the midline. So you're looking laterally with that eye, which is an abducting action. So then this nerve is only going to go to the lateral rectus. You can see that it's going in here and curving around, and there's our lateral rectus muscle. So if you can remember that the abducens nerve uh, only controls the lateral rectus, and the trochlear nerve only controls the superior oblique, then the ocular motor controls everything else. Okay, and that's the three nerves, three cranial nerves that help to move the eye. So you can see how important uh, the small eye, eye movements that we have are because we have three nerves that control them. All right, let's move on to um, our trigeminal. So we have to go back one nerve and talk about Roman numeral five, the trigeminal nerve. This is a really big one. This is both mixed, it's a sensory of the face as well as muscles of mastication. So let's look at our, our branches we have so let me introduce a word here, ganglion. I think I really talk about ganglions in, in the spinal cord unit. 
but a ganglion is cell bodies of the nerve. Okay, so in the brain, a collection of cell bodies that have a, the same function was called a nucleus. In the peripheral nervous system, when we leave the brain and we leave the spinal cord itself, then where we find cell bodies of neurons in a collected region is called a ganglion, okay? So this is a trigeminal nerve ganglion. This is where we have a lot of the bodies of this nerve. So the branch that comes up to the eye is called the ophthalmic branch. The branch that enters and reaches into the muscles of the, or skin, I should say, of the maxilla region. This is going to be the maxillary branch. And then we have the mandibular branch. Okay, so now we can see what all these holes are, right? The mental foramen was for this branch. That infraorbital foramen was for this branch of the maxilla, the maxillary branch. Okay, so sensory of the face. So all of the touch and itch and pain or whatever you feel on your face is due to this nerve, trigeminal nerve. So anytime you touch your face, you would feel anything on your face due to this nerve. And then, of course, the muscles of mastication. Okay, so chewing, uh, you remember, let's review. What are the muscles of mastication? They were the temporalis muscle, the masseter muscle, and the pterygoids, right? The medial and lateral pterygoid. Those are all going to help you chew. Those are controlled by trigeminal. All right. So this one is called the facial nerve. Oh, yeah, facial nerve. So number seven. Um, this one has five branches. And I. so here's a little picture for you. I memorize the five branches still with a mnemonic, which is 10 zebras bought my car, which doesn't make any sense, but I remember it that way. So we have the temporal branch. We have the zygomatic branch, we have the buccal branch, buccal means cheek, mandibular branch, and then we have the cervical branch. So the facial nerve is going to be your facial expression. Um, so this is a big nerve. It has uh, both sensory and motor function. But anytime you make a face, right? So if you say, why the face? <laughs> You're making a face because of the facial nerve, right? So all the skeletal muscle of facial expression is controlled by the facial nerve. It also is going to control your tears. It's also going to control your two of the three of your salivary glands. Okay, so you have three salivary glands on each side. So you have a six total, but this is going to control two out of the three. So uh, in the sensory component, we have some of our tongue is going to be innervated by this facial nerve. Okay, so that's a big nerve. Let's look at, um, actually this is out of order. So the facial nerve, then we have to go to vestibular cochlear, which is here. Oops, no, here's vestibular cochlear. So Roman numeral eight, uh, cranial nerve eight is vestibular cochlear. And there's two branches. There is a vestibular branch and there is a cochlear branch. So when we get into senses and I talk about your sense of hearing, we'll talk about this again. But this cranial nerve here, the vestibular cochlear nerve, is when those two branches come together. So the vestibular branch coming from the vestibule of your inner ear, this is your balance. Remember your inner ear has the role of balance and your inner ear also has the role of hearing, which is the job of the cochlea. So the vestibular branch and the cochlear branch will come together to make the vestibulocochlear nerve. All right, so when you hear something or you're turning your head and you're, you know exactly where your head is in space, that information travels into your brainstem with this nerve. And I'll go a little bit further and remember our internal acoustic meatus or our internal acoustic canal, that's a hole in the temporal bone. There, this is that route for that nerve to come into the brain. All right, now let's go back to the um, glossopharyngeal, vestibular cochlear, then glossopharyngeal. So glosso, remember the glossus group of the muscles? Glossus means tongue, glossopharyngeal. So this goes to the tongue and to the pharynx. The pharynx is going to be the throat. So let's look at the special features of your glossopharyngeal cranial nerve 9. So this is going to go to a third of your tongue for taste, okay? It also has this very interesting branch that goes into a blood vessel that we have in our neck. 
So this is called the carotid artery, and there's a widening of this artery called the carotid sinus. And in the sinus, you have something called the carotid body. This is the body as part of the nervous system. So this carotid body is going to detect our blood pressure, the pH of our blood, and whether or not we have, or just detecting the CO2 and oxygen content of our blood. So this is critical because how does your brain know? How does your brain stem? Remember the brain stem having all those critical jobs of keeping you alive. How does your brain stem know if you have, if your blood is oxygenated enough, or if you have um, adequate amounts of, or if your, you know, your pH is within range, or maybe you have too much CO2 in the bloodstream, or your blood pressure is too high, and we need to adjust your um, cardiac output, right? So all that information is going to come in from the carotid body. It's a really important structure of this um, glossopharyngeal nerve. And then, as the name implies, it's going to move muscles of your pharynx, so in swallowing. And then we're going to have um, the parotid salivary gland, so it's going to squeeze. This is the, your largest salivary gland, so when you eat something sour, sometimes when you can feel the sides of your your cheeks um, kind of hurt a little bit, that's because the smooth muscle of this gland is squeezing out the saliva. Um, so that's this nerve. All right, let's do the vagus nerve. So the vagus nerve is a really large nerve. Again, it's going to um, be a mixed nerve and it's going to run down to our thorax. So it's going to have an innervating our viscera here, our heart and our lungs. And it's also going to go down uh, through our diaphragm and innervate our muscles of digestion, our uh, abdominal viscera. So um, in terms of sensory, it can sense the viscera in these cavities and also sense the diaphragm. So this vagus nerve is the rest and digest nerve. So that is called the parasympathetic nerve fibers. So if you want, if you are relaxed at the moment and your breathing rate is shallow and your heart rate is slower and you're digesting your food, this is because the vagus nerve is active. When the vagus nerve is firing its action potentials, you feel calm and your organs are calm. Um, that of course is your parasympathetic uh, rest and digest um, function. Um, Okay, so that's carried through by the vagus nerve. Next is our accessory nerve. Let's move to the accessory. So the accessory nerve is um, called accessory because it's an accessory to the vagus. It kind of uh, arises really from the spinal cord, comes up through our form and magnum into the skull, and then back out with our, um, our vagus nerve. So it's kind of a funny one, but it's easy to spot because it has many roots that come away from the spinal cord, so number 11 accessory. And since it's further down, it actually, it's uh, going to control the muscles that shrug our shoulders and in our neck. So if you look at the motor commands, the trapezius, the sternocleidomastoid, and the pharynx and larynx, right? So these muscles we learned about the infrahyoid and uh, suprahyoid muscles are controlled here by the accessory nerve. And our last nerve is motor to the tongue only, hypoglossal. So hypoglossal, glossal referring to tongue, coming away from our brain stem, innervating our tongue for all uh, speech. Okay, so that is our cranial nerve. So you're going to need to know the, the table. Um, for the uh, exam on this, which is going to be in your chapter 16 test. All right, so this is an example of our cranial nerve. Uh, what, if, what happens if cranial nerve 12, one of them goes out? So remember, these cranial nerves are paired. So since the hypoglossal nerve goes to the tongue and controls your tongue, you can see that the tongue, if we did a midline down the center, it's deviating over to uh, this man's left-hand side. So um, that means that one side of his nerves is not working and actually it's going to be the side, this side here on his right. Because when both nerves are working, both nerves will be giving muscle tone to the tongue. And if one side gives out, 
so this side is giving out, right? Then the muscle tone, even though it's just a little bit of a contraction, it's enough to pull the tongue in that direction uh, since there's no counteracting tone on this side anymore. Okay, so it's one of those examples uh, of uh, palsy. Um, so the word palsy, which I will introduce later as well, is the term is basically what happens when your nerve stops working. Um, there's many uh, etiologies for palsy or many causes for palsy, um, but palsy is the word that they use for the nerve is just not working. All right, so what you can do is you can use this to practice labeling your cranial nerves. So you want to print out this slide. And then here's a little quiz on your cranial nerve. So let's just go through it. So it innervates the four extrinsic eye muscles. So remember the eye mover is going to do four out of the six of our eye muscles. So this is called the oculomotor, cranial nerve three. Sensory of the face. So remember if you touch your face, it's going to be the trigeminal, not facial. Facial is facial expression. And then motor, it innervates the trapezius and the sternocleidomastoid. This is going to be accessory. This one, innervating the tongue for speech, that's going to be hypoglossal. Innervates muscles of mastication, so chewing. Chewing as well as the sensing the touch. So this is going to be trigeminal. Heart is going to be vagus, right? Sensory innervation for hearing and equilibrium. This is coming from our inner ear, so this is vestibulocochlear. Innervates facial expression. So now we have facial, right? Why the face? That's the facial nerve. Innervates our lateral rectus only. Remember, our lateral rectus of the eye is going to abduct the eye, so that's abducens. And then the three that are primarily sensory will be the uh, we have olfactory smell, we are optic for vision, and then we have our hearing, which is vestibulocochlear. That's going to be primarily sensory. All right, and that's it.